welcome back everybody um, today I thought we would go through color mixing um, I often get asked how I match colors um, regardless of the object I mean, I've chosen a hydrangea that's going past its best and its colors are changing um, a lot of learners particularly find it really difficult to choose their base colors and how to get something that's very very close to imitate what they're painting now the issue obviously with the color mixing is that whatever i'm doing on the camera is going to be slightly more enhanced than it would be in real life so that includes the paint and the majority of mistakes that would be made mixing paints are only going to come from the paints that you own so the makers that you have so i want to take you through my process and obviously i've been doing this for over 40 years and what i've come to realize that i have chosen maybe even subconsciously particular paints that allow me to create the colors that i want so if you're a beginner and you have a beginner set you are probably not going to be able to get as many say of the flowers or the botanicals that you want to achieve because there are going to be certain colors missing from that palette so today i'm going to stick with a couple of really well-known makes so this is shamenka and i have added a few paint to this as you can see in the middle um, very good quality paints and here I've added some quinacridone I'll explain that one later I'm also going to use Winsor & Newton to all intents and purposes they look the same so again I've added through the center line a lot more color now like I said to all intents and purposes, they look very, very similar. But they're not. Different colours from different makers, or the same colours from different makers, I should say, uh, will give you slight variations. They may dry slightly differently. They may have um, a little bit more depth to them than another makers have so you will find as you go along you'll be adding different paints from different makers so one of the things I like to do when I'm using my boxes is to actually do a color swatch uh, this is so I know what this dries like and that's really important when you're trying to mix colors is that you know how they dry so you'll see for instance um, so some of the colors are just not even remotely like the swatch when they're wet that's actually upside down so I'll turn that the right way up so for instance this one here it's very very dark but actually it's cobalt blue and this is how it looks so sometimes you can never tell what paints are what so this third one is actually a brown wouldn't know that by looking at it not in its dry form uh, so it's very very handy just to get a basic idea of how things will dry so using this swatch i can actually get up quite close and find out which blue i would need as my at least my base color so as you can see, cobalt blue is probably the closest I've got for this particular flower. So I can write down oh, cobalt blue as a start. And then what I want to do is to actually look into some of the darker shadow areas. Anything else that I can use. Um, probably a touch of Payne's Grey maybe in the back here so maybe Payne's Grey so I usually write all of this down and as I turn over I've now got this fading to green but what green I mean I have a few greens here but which green so again I can get up quite close it's 
Ooh. It's either going to be the Terra Vert or, in this case, the Olive. Now, remember, this is not a beginner's set. This is a professional set and I've added extra. So I'm going to go with Olive and Terra Vert first. And I'm just going to have a quick look round and see if there are any other... Actually, there's some pinks coming in here as well, right in here. Slightly pinky, slightly purpley. So again, I want to get in there and have a really good look at... I think it is Cobalt Violet. cobalt violet I'm just going to hang that violet around at the end there just to make sure that I haven't missed any oh, I think that is absolutely fine so I feel that the veins here are probably more ultramarine blue which is this one here I think that's much closer so I'm going to put ultramarine down as well. And as I look at this here, I can see much more violet coming in. And I think I'm going to have to go with the dioxazine violet here. Now I'm just going to do my colour swatches, so like I have here, I've written it down and I'm going to do a, a cobalt blue, so this is my tester, now generally what I will do is to pull pigment to one end, deeper one end, lighter the other. So this will show what happens when it dries and you'll be able to see whether that's the right colour. And we had a bit of Payne's Grey. So again, Payne's Grey needs to be I'm not sure about that now that it's out. Check that uh, no, Payne's grey and the black have got mixed up. So we'll do that again. So that's Payne's grey, so that's slightly bluer. And we have an olive. So I'm not using these as thick, pasty as you might think I should. Start with pale, keep it a little darker one end and you'll have a, a larger range of colour. Now, going for the Terravert, and the Terravert's quite a transparent colour so you won't really get it very dark very handy colour though and we have cobalt violet next ultramarine And finally, the violet. And that's not it, I've just picked up the wrong one. Where's my indigo? That's the colour I want. Now, as my 
coal bolts run a bit I'm just going to lift a little bit off the edge so I get a paler version and maybe the same with the ultramarine now secret is let them dry first S see what you have and try and match them back up to this then we can start mixing to get closer so while that swatch is drying, what I'm going to do is to move to the Shemenka colours. Now, I don't actually have Cobalt in this one, but I do have Ultramarine. So I'm going to try their version of Ultramarine. Now, if you watch carefully, I'm going to take this away. Actually, the camera's probably not as bright as it needs to be. You'll see there is a difference between these two. They're both Ultramarine blue. But this one is much, much brighter, it's richer, not so much violet in it. So it might actually be closer to the colours that we need. So if I bring that back in, I can see that this is probably a little bit closer to what I can see. So now we can try... see we need an olive so uh, I think this is their olive and again we have something that's less yellow that's the wrong violet I've just picked up Okay, so now that these have dried, I'm just going to have another look at some of this Shemenka Violet. Because I think I prefer this one to the Dark Sazine. So, I think by changing... Let me just get some of it. So that's Shemenka Violet. I think that actually works a little bit better. It's a little bit more vibrant than the Windsor & Newton Dioxazine Violet. And I also think for Some of this blue, some of the more greyish blue, that this is much closer. So I'm going to put that down here. So I put a little bit down, and again, I'm just going to pull that out a little bit. Probably overdid that a little bit, so a little bit more. So I actually prefer that, or at least tints of that, from Shemenka rather than the Cobalt from Windsor. So I have a rough idea now of what base colours I can use. From there I would need to start mixing colours together in order to get it much more accurate. Okay, so I've actually just removed this one from the head. And again, I'm going to just try mixing and matching because this is the one that's got some of the green, some of the blues, some of the violet in. So I have given myself a little sketch over there. But to get an idea about how close or not close these are, I am going to start with very pale... washes to see 
if I can get something closer. So I started with the blue at the bottom. I'm just going to take that down a little bit. You can see there's a little bit of violet there. So again, I can blend them two together, see what I get. And of course, I want the olive from there. So as a first wash, that wouldn't be too bad. Maybe a touch more blue. So remember, these are going to dry lighter on your first pass. Maybe a little bit more violet. So that'll do as first pass. And then we can, again, go over them with deeper colors into smaller and smaller places. So this is almost dry now. You can see it's, it's not a bad representation color wise. I mean, we are gonna use this as the palest colors that we can see within our petal and you can see here a base coat for a couple of flowers which you can see in here so the best thing to do is to let it dry have a paler version first and then gradually work up to the darker colors so now I'm going to go in with a little bit deeper blue keep it a little bit more controlled and I'm just going to add a little bit of the violet that I can see there, bring that round there. Now I'm not using a particularly small brush. Um, but you could do if, if it feels easier to, to use a smaller brush. for now what I want to do is to just take some water extra water at the sides of all of these and just let it run a little bit further now obviously I don't want to dilute that too much but if you do just go back a little bit drop in a little bit more it's still going to dry lighter than we're putting it on right now And I'm going to go back with the green as well. So I'm not worried about all the, the lights and darks at the minute. I'm just trying to get a variation of the colours in the areas that I want them at the strength that they are going to be needed. I think that is actually more violet down there.
So now we're going to let that dry off again and see if we're even closer still to the colour that we see in front of us. Okay, so I'm just going to go back for a, yet another layer of the blue. Remember, I'm only going for colour accuracy, not painting this for real. However, this isn't coming out that bad, so I'm quite pleased so far. can come back in and tap this down just a little bit to blend the green and the blue together in this particular case. And again, if this dries just too light again, I'll have to go over it with deeper and deeper paint every time. Just soften the edges so we're, we're a little closer than we were and again if I have any highlights to take out I can take them out later but generally I'm quite happy with the way that has gone okay so I'm going to move on to this greeny blue petal in here I feel that that really needs a little bit more yellow in it so I'm going to give it a little bit of green gold and then back to our blue. So as this blue is mixing with the green, it's actually going to become very dull, almost to the point of a grey, greyish blue. So again, looking at base coats first, I'm always looking for what's beneath the surface, if you like. So that I can start building from there. And if I need to remove anything, I can do that. Excuse my next door neighbour. So I'm going to take a little bit of the blue, put it into this next petal, and yeah, they might run, but as we're only colour matching, I'm not so worried. Let's put some blue in there.
So there I have some base coats, which I'm, I'm really quite happy with. Let's see how they dry. And see if I'm really quite close to the subject. Okay, so back to this blue hydrangea. You can see here, if I offer up my colour swatch for my paints, this blue is really quite close. So there's no point in me trying to uh, get any closer with it um, because it is very, very close to start with. So I am actually going to just start with a second layer to see how deep I need to go with this. Now it may be that I need to deepen the blue with some extra pigment. I can actually see some violet hues in there as well. So again, I'm going to pick some of the violet up that we had in this first one. And I'm just going to feather that in. To the wet paint and again i'd let that dry see how that dries and see if i'm close enough okay so while that's drying i'm actually going to try and color match an apple so a nice green apple now again again i'm going to offer up my color swatches and see which colour is the closest to start with? In this case, it is the Shaminka May Green. I'll just check against my Winsor & Newton greens. And perhaps its darker areas are more olive. So I can use just do a colour swatch here. So into its light side. I would say I need to tone that down a bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to. Let's just do that on the side. Do that there. And I think hair stuck there <laughs> so just with a tiny addition of yellow ochre we've got something a lot lot closer and again into the darker side which would be this shadow side I can use now obviously I think I might have done that a little bit too dark but you see the principle but I'm trying to use basic greens before tweaking them. I think that might actually need a tiny, tiny tweak of blue to get that a little bit closer. So I'm just going to zoom out a little, out a little bit. So you can see my hands in the way isn't helping but they're not bad they're not bad representation and where it goes even lighter still in the green I know that I can take a brush and take out the highlight a little bit lighter there so here's another one that we can try and color match here so you can see the slightly pinky peachy hues in here but again you need to find your, your starting point and these beigey colours will be your hardest ones to match um, if we look along here the, it really is not a lot that actually matches this not a lot at all so let's just go to the Shaminka and the closest would be the Naples yellow now not everybody's going to have Naples yellow so to make something very similar we can start with our raw sienna or our yellow ochre, which is in there. I think we'll start with the yellow ochre. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to start with the yellow ochre base. 
I'm then going to tweak that with a little bit of burnt sienna, I think. So not too heavy on the burnt sienna. Do these tiny little bits at a time and just test that. It needs a little bit more. And again, I'll test that. Okay, so that, that's not a bad match. And again, I can add water to make it more realistic. So you can see here, I've added more water and it's very close. And I've done that with just literally two colours. So if we look at this band here, again, it's slightly pinkier. Now I'd use the same base. Use those two colours and then move to a slightly pink tinge, so something like the rose. Just tipped into there. Remember, tiny little increments. That's not enough. You can't take away the paint, so you have to add it in tiny little bits. So I'm going to do that again. And there you go. So colour mixing really is all about finding your base colour that's the nearest to it and using a little bit of colour knowledge, using opposites. Try that first. Okay. So you can see my colour matches, they're not that bad. They'd be a really good starting point for the shell particularly. Apple. So I'll show you what the swatches look like. And again, first and second layers of flower. So you can see how putting many layers of a similar paint is going to help create that depth and very realistic colour matching just by playing with what you have. So I'll go back to the green, I've actually got a green flower here. So again, using the same colours that I've used here, I could invariably get deeper and deeper to match this. Sometimes you just have to consider multi-layering the areas that you want to have depth, depth of colour, depth of tone. And it really is all about knowing the colours that you own. So you can see here, I've just picked up the ultramarine blue and I'm just quickly putting in some of those veins. So again, I haven't had to work too hard to get a lot of these colours. Um, I've used as many colours that are as basic to the set of colours. Now that won't always happen, obviously, and some colours you do really have to work hard at especially with pinks i find with flower ones they can be quite difficult to to get right unless you have a certain set of pinks in your arsenal i'm going to just deepen a bit of the pink or purple areas So again, I'm only doing this roughly, so it's not going to look identical, but the colours are a really good, good match so far. And that's really what we're looking for. If we can get the colours on point. Uh, if you're not sure whether your colours are close enough or not, you, there are certain questions you need to be asking yourself. So. Let's just take this for instance. Is that more a yellow green? We can see that there's green there, but is it more yellow? Is it more brown? Is it more uh, red? Ask yourself these questions. Blue, yellow, green, red. Any one of those will get you drifting in the right car in the right way 
to try and get to your closest match to something very realistic. So I hope you found this a useful exercise. However, I would spend more time learning to mix with all manner of different objects that you come across. Just try a little swatch, especially doing this. Do it here just like this to match. Learn to match your colours with even obscure objects such as corks, uh, anything, spoons, you name it, anything you come across, just try a little swatch using your main colours and trying to tweak these colours to get something closer to what you need. It's the greatest skill a painter has.